goodbye to Cassini. That's what we are going to talk about. Cassini is the name of a scientist, all right, but in today's context, it's more remembered as the name of the famous uh, spacecraft which became the artificial satellite of uh, Saturn. It's a 20 year project because it, it was launched on October 15, 1997. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion mile trek to Saturn. It took seven long years to reach Saturn and finally reached it in 2004 and started going round the planet on July 1st. Therefore, effectively, it has done 13 years of observations and without rest, all the 24 hours, so you can imagine the voluminous data it has provided on not only this planet Saturn, but all its satellites. It also has some special qualities associated with it. It is one of the largest spacecraft that has ever been sent. And it was the first to use plutonium radioisotope for thermoelectric generation for energy. This is something unusual because it had to be implemented because at that distance of Saturn, the solar energy will not be sufficient to keep it running for such a long time. At the same time when it was launched, it was uh, uh, also, it, it also gave room to a lot of debate on the use of radioisotope for this purpose. However, after 20 years looking back at it, we feel that that was a, a, a great uh, decision that was taken and therefore Cassini has been able to produce a lot of important results in the last uh, 13 years. It also uh, was one of the first spacecrafts to do what are called slingshots, that is a flyby. That means to change the course of its path, it used the gravitational planet, the gravitational force of other planets. It passed by Venus twice so that it could deflect its route and then it used the Earth itself to move out of the Earth um, into the outer uh, regions and finally, to take a turn at uh, the uh, planet Saturn, it used the gravitational influence of Jupiter. The uh, project was supposed to be concluded in 2008 and it was given an extension. And again in 2010 also it was given an extension and for the last seven years it has been pouring a lot of data. So what are the important discoveries that it has done? Uh, it has done a lot of uh, it has provided a lot of useful information, but one of the most important things is the test of uh, general relativity. So, when we try to do this experiment with other celestial bodies, the problem that we encounter is the signal strength. Because the radio waves or the optical signals that are uh, sent by the celestial bodies are very weak. Cassini's uh, signal was quite uh, uh, strong. And therefore, when it was on the other side of the sun, when the planet was on the other side of the sun, the radio waves emitted by Cassini pass in, by the side of the sun to reach the earth. And therefore, it underwent this uh, gravitational bend and therefore, it provided a very useful tool for the test of general relativity. It uh, uh, discovered several moons of Saturn because it was able to pierce through the thin rings. It discovered almost seven moons and this the last one which was discovered in 2013 which is named as Peggy is something special. In fact, Peggy was being formed. Therefore, it was able to show us the birth of a satellite from among the particles of the ring. There are a lot of theories on how the uh, satellites are formed or for that matter how the planet is formed out of a disk and for that Peggy provided the most useful. It made uh, close approaches to several satellites of Saturn called Phoebe, Enceladus, Iapetus, Rhea, Hyperion and Dione and used the flyby technique for all of these to study the chemical composition, atmospheric structure and so on. It, dis it provided us many interesting discoveries for example, the uh, 
atmospheric uh, patterns of the titan it even discovered a lake on titan and it also showed that enceladus has quite a good amount of water and uh, the uh, it also uh, descended a probe called huygens huygens also is the name of another uh, important uh, scientist of the previous century he was the one who showed that the rings are independent of the main body and they rotate independently so the space probe named after him uh, detached from the main body of this uh, spaceship and landed on titan and provided very valuable information on the atmospheric chemical composition and wind structure etc of the planet uh, of the satellite titan the hurricanes on the planet saturn were very carefully monitored and we also had seen from the uh, uh, photographs uh, taken by voyager and other uh, spaceships that there are some kind of spoke like phenomena appearing in the rings and cassini made a very detailed study of them and in the year 2010 there was a great storm which created some kind of a, uh, a hurricane like pattern in the atmosphere of saturn and the after effects of that also were studied by cassini one of the interesting pictures it sent was that of the earth and the moon it looked back at home it was nearly at a distance of about 1600 million kilometers from earth but it took the planet earth which looks like a small dot we may not be able to see the continents but the moon was distinguished this was one of the very interesting photographs that was sent by cassini so what is happening on the 15th of september so the whole project is going to come to an end so it is going to plunge on the planet saturn so immediately the question that rises arises is is this necessary yes because if we leave cassini unattended it would have crashed on any moon it could be titan it could be enceladus it could be any other day on it but in these two satellites some primitive form of life may be existing this is another possibility that was thrown open by the data provided by cassini so those microorganisms may get get destroyed by this impact this was one of the reasons why a planned descent was uh, opted out so was there any other option yes they could have put it in a very elongated orbit however this uh, would not ensure that there can be a subsequent crash it, that was inevitable so it is better that we decide on the actually crash. this uh, final flyby began on april 22nd itself it moved through the rings every 6 days that means day after day it was able to provide us lot of information on the rings on august 14th it was just 1000 kilo 1600 kilometers above the atmosphere when i say atmosphere or above the disk the visible disk of saturn above that it was uh, at a height of 1600 so the dive was rather slow we should say but when we look at the velocity we realize that it's not that slow at all and a total of 22 such dives through the rings are anticipated and uh, each dive is expected to provide valuable information on the planet. now what is the aim of this uh, experiment this is a very expensive in- experiment of plunging it onto the planet saturn so one of the aims is to sample the gases of the extended at- upper atmosphere we know that ga- uh, saturn is a gaseous planet therefore its atmosphere is very dense and there are stratifications which can be guessed only from looking from above for example it has helium um, but the atmosphere is mostly hydrogen there is very little helium this is because this helium is expected to be sinking down this means uh, the uh, collapse of helium towards the interior should be providing some extra source of energy which means saturn should be radiating more infrared than it is absorbing from the sun which is true that has been observed therefore in this process we will be able to estimate how much of helium is being 
uh, sinking down in, into the atmosphere. That means we will be able to get a very precise estimate of hydrogen and helium in the upper layers and that will set a constraint on what are the materials that may be possible, uh, possibly present in the deep atmospheres. Suppose it is able to survive dipping down further, then there will be a drag, atmospheric drag. And therefore, the after effects and thrusters are expected to maintain a stable flight, which will be, uh, we will be able to know only after we get signals from there, after it has a fair descent to this thing. That means it will provide a very unique data on the atmospheric chemical composition, structure, and even dynamics of the atmosphere. Therefore, this is going to be a very interesting experiment and people are eagerly waiting to see the results. One of the things that we are yet to understand is the age of the ring. So what is the age of the ring? When were they formed? The data gathered by Cassini indicates that the spectacular rings of Saturn are relatively younger than, they th they, than we had thought about it. So we had used the measurements of hydrothermal power of Enceladus from the Cassini spacecraft. Then we arrive at an age of about 100 million years for the icy moons of Saturn. That means those which are interior to Saturn. This also should be the age of the rings. That was the decision, that was the conclusion that was arrived at. That means the formation of the rings of Saturn and the inner moons will be dating back to say 100 or 60 million years, which means around that time dinosaurs were roaming around on the Earth. But it is very likely that Saturn had a comparable satellite system before because they were the ones who would provide the material for the ring system. That means there were previous generations of moons which were formed and destroyed because of collisions. Therefore, very numerous calculations have been performed and they show that there is an orbital resonance that would have shifted the moons into crossing orbits, allowing them to eventually hit one another. So this is another interesting calculation for celestial mechanics. These collisions could have formed this giant ring of debris, which gives rise to new moons subsequently. Therefore, this must be a continuous process. And the uh, confirmation comes from the discovery of Peggy, which, is, which was first identified as a shadow um, uh, in the ring system. And then they found that it was the material which was getting together, coalescing to form some kind of a blob and therefore the ring system remains quite a mysterious one. Another thing we are not able to understand about the rings is its mass. How much of mass is contained in the rings? The uncertainty is 100%. We just have no clue on that because if they are more massive, they should be older. A key property of these spectacular rings and bands of ice is their total mass. Hitherto, the Cassini flyby outside the ring system was not able to determine the mass of the rings. Therefore, it was important that it passes through the rings to get it. When it flies closer to the innermost D ring, see the rings have been classified as A, B, C, D, E, etc. Among them, D is the inner one. It will measure at that instant when it is passing through that, the velocity of the probe will be continuously changing. This is because of the gravity field generated by the planet and the great encircling bands of ice and dust. Therefore, by measuring the velocity of the probe or by measuring the change in the velocity of the probe, we will be able to determine the mass of the ring. That means we can measure the velocity of Cassini to an accuracy of almost a few microns per second. That means we will, to that extent, the uh, measurement of uh, uh, mass will be quite accurate. The wide band of ice and dust that surrounds Saturn has been likened to a miniature version of the kind of uh, planetary disks that are uh, generally seen around uh, new stars where planets are being formed. In these days, planets are expected to form. That means by understanding the rings and the process of uh, formation of the moons and small moons in the ring system, 
we will be able to directly uh, link it to the formation of disks around young stars and therefore the formation of the uh, planets around the young stars. This becomes especially meaningful in the context of today's discovery of uh, thousands and thousands of extrasolar planets which are going to be our new colonies. So in the process of uh, plunging, what else is remaining to be understood? Here we have another interesting situation. We know that the length of one day on Saturn is 10.5 hours. When I say 10.5 hours, it is the rotation period of Saturn. But how precise is it? We have a question on this because based on only some Doppler effect measurements, we fix the rotation period. And therefore, the rotation period uncertainty will be equal to, will be proportional to the measurement we make of the Doppler shift of the velocity. Whereas, Voyager in the year 1780, when it went past Saturn, it was able to give us a precise value of the rotation period. But now we see that the measurements of Cassini is 6 minutes larger than what Voyager had predicted. That means Saturn has slowed down by about 6 minutes in the last 30 years. So what could be the reason? This leads to another question that is, in the case of all the planets, the magnetic axis and the rotation axis are not aligned. For example, our own Earth has a different rotation axis and a different magnetic axis and the angle between the two is continuously varying. In the case of Saturn, remarkably, they are perfectly aligned. This is another puzzle because any explanation to uh, explain this six minutes uh, difference requires or demands that the two axes should be offset. That means it has to generate magnetic field currents and therefore something that is happening in the in interior, the deep metallic hydrogen layer should be without offset. That means this field should be, will be dying out. So this is what is expected. Further, as it approaches closer and closer, many other satellites like Peggy can be found out. As I mentioned earlier, Peggy is a special case. It was just caught in the action of being born on April 15, 2013. And uh, Carl Murray used Cassini images of uh, Prometheus, another uh, satellite, and its influence on the F ring. He got the image but was drawn to a 2,000 kilometer long smudge in the background. So he used a highly res high resolution pictures of an embedded object. He knows it exists but he is not able to see. What we were able to see was only the shadow. And therefore there was no direct image of Peggy. That means did Peggy arise from collisions or from accretion? This is a question. If bigger moons are formed via this process, then the rings have to be very old. As was mentioned earlier, the ages of the rings is a very big question mark. So as Cassini orbits closer to Saturn inside the rings, the resolution, high resolution uh, images will come down to uh, or will take us to 2 kilometers per pixel and therefore we may be able to see satellites like Peggy or more of them whose orbit is continuously evolving and changing in time. So its orbit is believed to be less than 5 kilometers across. So the long smudge pictured earlier was possibly due to its collision with another object kicking up the icy dust. Therefore, more such discoveries are perhaps expected. The Huygens probe which detached from Cassini descended onto the moon Saturn long ago in 2004 itself. Its batteries were nearly drained but it took very fascinating pictures of the surface. That means that today we have only just another planet other than Mars for which we have the surface 
features photographed. This um, this is extraordinary because Titan is believed to contain lakes and seas of methane, ethane, and so on. Uh, the northern latitudes of Titan are uh, dominated by methane lakes uh, and the gas bubbles are also seen. This gas is nitrogen. So they look like bubbles on a soapy solution. The fly past of Enceladus in 2015 also revealed icy geysers. That means they were ejecting some plumes of very high velocity, that means there could be a motion beneath it. Therefore, these two satellites, Titan and Enceladus, are promising of some form of life on it, and therefore it's very interesting uh, to study. So, what are the questions we are going to get answers for in the final plunge? Cassini would continue to settle these questions. Uh, for example, as I mentioned, the precise length of the day, the al alignment of the magnetic field, magnetic axis and the rotation axis, and the effect of magnetic field on the inside rings, the age of the rings, the mass of the rings, whether they are as old as Saturn at all. If they are less massive, they could be very strong. Uh, the youth may be in terms of 200 million years. So, whether moonlets like Piggy, Peggy are still forming. Finally, what exactly caused the rings? This question remains. That means, there is a lot of science waiting to be revealed at its final plunge at 100,000 kilometers per hour on September 15th. So this is what we are expecting to see. And let's see what the results are going to be. Thank you.